that the Bible talk about hope in Christ Jesus, endless hope, not in a political situation, not in the economic breakdown, not in a climate change, but the Bible talk about hope, endless hope, in believing the person of Jesus Christ. And today I would like to share with you a few thoughts on evangelism. You know, we are here from different churches, different location, but we are here for one cause, and that is Christ Jesus to be glorified. We are here today, my friend, on behalf of Jesus Christ, an ambassador, a stewardship of his kingdom. We are here to share with you the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glad tidings. Basically, we cannot give you a good advice. We have here to give you the good news. And the good news is love, the good news is sin because we have a bad news, not only the good news, the bad news is my friend, the Bible says the wage of sin is death. And then we have Christ, the only sufficient savior. Then we have repentance, you must repent. Repentance sounds negative, but repentance means change of mind, change of direction, and then acceptance in the person of Jesus Christ. Today. The Bible said, love. The Greek philosopher has given us at least five types of love. Nomos, that is submission love, according to the Judeo-Christian principle. Then we got erotic, sexual love. We got philo love, friendly love. We got storge, which is a parent between fathers and mothers' children. A parent love. And then we got agape, unconditional love. In the New Testament, more than 200 times it is talk about this kind of love, which is agape, unconditional love, sacrificial love, which is no selfish love, but God's kind love. And today we are here to share this message of you, or to you, about this love, which is God command us to pursue with all type of people, even those who are not in a church, even non-believer, even sodomite, we are commanded to love them as a person, as a sinner, but we are commanded to rebuke them in their lifestyle because so am I is a lifestyle. So if you're born a boy, you're gonna be a man. If you're born a girl, you're gonna be a woman. And there's only two types of gender, male and female. God said in Genesis, let us make man in our image. In the image of God created them male and female. So there are only two types of gender, my friend male and female. Anything out of this is the invention of the devil. So the Bible says in, in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3, the Lord hath appeared of all unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, never was I with the love in kindness have I drawn thee. Greater love, that is Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. The Bible is full of love from Genesis all the way through, through the revelation. The Bible says in the beginning, God, if God is love, he's that now is no God. Now is no love because God is love. He knows that he's that now is no God, does not love God because love, God is love. The Bible Jesus Christ said in, 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 in the Gospel of John, greater love, chapter 15, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. He laid down his life for you, my friend, and for me. Why? Because of the love of God and because of the sin of Adam. That was two purposes, two reasons why Jesus Christ died. First, because of sin, Adam messed up in a garden, and second, because of the, this kind of love we call agape, unconditional sacrificial love. That is why Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary. He laid down his life for you, that you and I may have life. Then he said, for God so loves the world. He said to Nicodemus, that brilliant theologian, that rabbi, sincere man, honest man, came to Jesus by night. And the Lord Jesus Christ said to him, not to the, not to the Samaritan woman, he said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, truly, truly, very, very, I said to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he said, Nicodemus, for God so loves the world mm. that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting love. Hallelujah. Everlasting life. For the Father himself loves you because you are loving me and believe that I came out from God. Yeah. For, the love, for the God himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came out of God. And he said, a new commandment. Our Muslim friend Hallelujah. says, Jesus didn't come and he, 
to bring a new law, we didn't bring any new law, but Jesus Christ said, a new commandment, a new law I give you, that you love one another as I have loved with you. By this, all men know that you are my disciple, if you have loved one another as I have loved with you. So therefore, my friend, we are here today to share this kind of love. No selfish love, no erotic, no filler, but agape, unconditional love. That is Jesus Christ himself. He laid down his life that you and I may have life, my friend. And then, let's talk about John 10.10. 10. You know the devil is your enemy. The devil is not your friend. The devil is the enemy of your soul. The devil will make you a salad, colorful. And he will say to you, now I made you a salad, now I want you to put your salt, because the Bible called believers the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So my friend, we know what it means to be the salt. The salt prevents corruption. But you see, you must listen to God because his voice, Jesus' voice today is like a bubbling brook. It's gentle, it's loving, it's kind, with, with, with mercy and grace. And he's calling you, start for it. London, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Why? For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So the devil come, my friend, not to, the devil come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, the thief, the enemy of your soul. The devil comes to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. Division, the devil is here to make division. Diversity is absolutely okay, because our guy is the God of diversity. The church, I wish we have many diversity, but no division. But the devil is trying very hard to destroy the marriage. It's trying very hard to destroy the marriage, because the marriage is sacred. Sex is beautiful in marriage. No in adultery, no in fornication, no outside of marriage. So the devil, the primary purpose for the devil is to attack the, the, the family, the, to destroy the, the, the family, and then he will destroy the church and then the society will be put down. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am come, the thief comes not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that you may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. And that is love, my friend. That is life, that is light. So God gave us life more abundantly. In Adam we are all dead, in Adam we are all sinful, under the law, and dead. That's the theology of judgment, punishment, and condemnation. But the Lord Jesus Christ reverse it. Now in Christ we have hope, we have grace, we have life. And that's why we are believing in Jesus Christ, my friend. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. So as I told you, my friend, love has to be with sacrificial. Love has to be given. It's always about giving, never receiving. And then here we have to talk about sin. Every evangelist, every pastor, every teacher must and have to talk about sin. Why? Because the Bible is talking about sin. S-I-N, no S-O-N. We are set free from the penalty, the power of sin. But the presence of sin is still in every believer. Only in death. You know, the salvation army, they have one phrase. In the death bed, so we are promoted to glory. That means even our death bed, we don't retire because we are looking for upper taker, no under taker. Promoted to glory. And that is where in our death bed, in our death, we will be perfected. The presence of sins here, but the penalty when you are born, the penalty of sin is broken. And now the power of sin by the blood of Jesus Christ, when he nailed to the cross of Calvary and buried in the heart of the, of the, of the earth, and he rose up again with the glorified body, we shall never be able to be able subject to death and pain and suffering. He's not going to come back to be born in the manger. He's not going to come back to be put on the cross. He's going to come back to rule and to reign and to conquer. How? Because he alone is the righteous judge. So sin, my friend, what is sin? Sin is the lack of conformity to the character of God. Sin resides in will, whether that will is supernatural as Satan himself or human will. My friend, sin is an, is an offense against the moral law of God. Sin, my friend, sin, you refuse to conform and to do the will of God. And that is what sin is. And the Bible says, any sin is not of faith, it's sin. All unrighteousness is in sin. You must be careful because sin is serious. Sin will destroy your life. Purity is a priority, but sin is what? Serious. Will destroy your life. As happened to David. 
many characters in the Bible, they fall short of the glory of God. Because the Bible says, for all have seen, Romans 3, 23, for all have seen and come short of the glory of God. Sin will destroy your life if you do not confess it and if you do not believe in your heart, Jesus Christ, then sin will destroy your life. The waste of sin, the Bible says. The waste of sin, Romans 6, 23. Yeah. The waste of sin is death. That's the bad news. But you see, the good news, follow my friend, the good news always is through the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the gift of God, that's the good news. Yeah. But the gift of God yeah. is eternal life. Yeah. Through who? No through Gandhi, no through Krishna, no through Buddha, no through Muhammad, no through the Pope, no through Donald Trump, no through King Charles III, but through our Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is able to meet all your needs. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his rich and glory by Christ Jesus. Not by any other man. That is sin. My friend has said in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. He said, As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. For all, why? Right? They are so, they are, there is none righteous, not even one. Why? Right? They are all gone out of the ways they are together, become unprofitable. And then he says, There is none that does good, not even one. Why? For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. The law will remind us that we are in Adam, we are sinful. But the grace of God reminds us that we do not deserve heaven, but God has promised us heaven because of his son Jesus Christ. And that is the grace of God. And that is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't deserve heaven, but he gives anyway. You know why? Because of his perfect love which is agape unconditional love then he said my friend sin has to be dealt with you must confess your sin as my brother said he is that covers his sin shall not prosper but he is that confess it and forsake them forsake them shall have mercy you must confess that if thou shalt convey with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scriptures that whosoever believes on him should not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Then he said, for whosoever, universal calling, not only individual, national, congregational, but universal calling, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, he or she shall be saved and shall not come under condemnation. Then Christ and Christ alone is sufficient savior. What on earth? Now, in the Old Testament, we have a sac animal sacrificial. That was only a shadow, a picture. In Genesis chapter three, an, an innocent animal had to die. Adam had no consciousness to kill an innocent animal to cover the shame of himself and Eve, a private part. So God took initiative and God killed an innocent animal. But blood had to be shed in a garden in order to cover the private part and the shame and the guilt of Adam and Eve. So that was only a shadow. That was only a picture for the coming Messiah, for the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. Now, through the blood of Jesus Christ, His blood is sufficient enough not only to cover your sin, not only to wash away your sin, but to cleanse you inside out. Past, present, future sin has been washed away, cleansed inside out by the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 1 verse 29, John the Baptist cried out, Behold the Lamb of God. He said, Behold the prophet, no. Behold the king, no. Behold the moral teacher, no. He said, Behold an apostle, no. He said, Behold the Lamb of God, mm. which takes away the sin of the world. And then he said, My friend, John 4, chapter 14, verse 16. And I will praise the Father, and he shall give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, neither now is him, but you know him, for he dwell with you and shall be in you. So we are not left here as an orphan. We are not here amongst the wild animal. We are not left here as an orphan. We are have man this hope in Christ Jesus that he will send a comforter, the spirit of truth that will remain with us forever. On the day of Pentecost, when the church of Jesus Christ was born, the, the Holy Spirit overshadowed the disciple and the other people in the room and they will all start speaking in their own dialect, in their own language. So John chapter 14 and then Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. 
Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone that hangs on a tree. Don't you know when they crucified Jesus Christ, they put the crown of sun on his head, that was represent the curse of the earth, because when Adam and Eve fell in a garden, fear came into the garden, and immediately sun and sizzle came out from the garden. That represent the earth was cursed, the animal was cursed physically and spiritually, Adam was cursed, and Eve was cursed. And today, my friend, through the Lord Jesus Christ, this curse has been lifted up. This curse is no longer available to the believer. Why? Because we have been reconciled from the from, 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 from the wrath of God. We have been reconciled to God. Therefore, God is no longer angry with us. You know why? Because we have fellowship with the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. So there's one God and one mediator between God and then the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all that we may be testified in due time. So you see, Jesus Christ became that perfect Passover lamb. He became that spotless lamb and he went to the cross voluntarily. He laid down his life. He says, therefore does my father love me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No man, that means no Roman, no Pharisee, no today, no angel, no demon, no man can take away this life from me but I lay down on myself I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again and he said this commandment have I received it of my father of my father I have received this commandment of my father then my friends he said in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgression he was brutal for all iniquities, the chastisement of all people that on him, and by his stripes we are healed. Are healed. For by grace, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of, and not of yourself, but of the gift of God. Not of works that any man should work, for we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus unto good work. What does that mean? My friend, Christ plus nothing equals salvation. Christ plus going to church? No. Christ plus giving money to the poor? No. Christ plus praying and preaching? No. My friend, Christ plus nothing. For by grace we are saved, through faith. No by good word. No by good word. We are saved by the grace of God. We don't deserve it. But the grace, my friend, grace means God reaches at Christ's expense. Amen. That's what grace means. An earned favor, an merited favor for everyone who believes is the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation was sealed by saying, the grace of God, no. The grace of the church, no. The grace of the apostle, no. Because these are the grace available to us. The grace of God, the grace of the apostle, and the grace of church. But he said the book of Revelation, John sealed it by saying, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The last verse, chapter 22, verse 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. That's how the book of Revelation was sealed. In the beginning, love created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God, if God is love, then love created the heaven and the earth, my friend. And then he says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, the epistle of John, he said that if we walk in the light, as he in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus, not the blood of animal, yeah. not the blood of any other person, yeah. but the blood of Jesus, yeah. can cleanse us from all sin. Then he says, my friend, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, that God command his love to us, that in that while we were just sinners, Christ died for us. While I was yet a piece of junk, while I was yet a miserable sinner, a lonesome sinner, the Bible says, but God commands his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. So this is the message. My friend, we have the message of peace, as my brother said. We have the message of joy and love. When they put Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, you know what they put there? They put there the fruit of the Spirit, the inner character of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. They put the fruit of the Spirit on the cross of Calvary. And that's how Jesus Christ became the sacrificial lamb, the spotless lamb. Behold the Lamb of God. So they put love on the cross. They put joy and peace on the cross. They put self-control on the cross. That's why he could curse his enemy. He could command thousands upon thousands of angels to wipe out the entire Jew and the Roman. But he chose by saying, Baba, Father, forgive them. He forgave his enemies. 
forgive them for they don't know what they do. Mm. Not what they do to Jesus, but what they do to their own soul. Because they didn't know. The Bible says if they knew, if the prince of this world, they knew Jesus, they knew the prince of life, they would not have crucified him. That's why the centurion is saying, surely, truly. He says, surely, surely, but assuredly, this man was the son of God. What on earth? Why did this man say, truly, truly, this man was the son of God? Because they crucified almost every day, at least five, six people were crucified by the Roman. But none of them acted like Jesus. None of them, if there were two criminals next to Jesus, one on the right, one on the left, they cursed the Roman, they swear at the Roman, but this man, Jesus Christ, was different. He blessed and he forgave his enemies on the cross. That's why the centurion cried out, Honest, honestly, he said, this was the Son of God. Wow. The attitude of mine were divided on the cross. The malefactors were divided on the cross. The Roman soldiers were divided on the cross. The high priest, the crowd, they cry out, do not put this name, King of the Jew, Jesus King of the Jew, in three languages, Roman, Greek, sorry, Greek, Hebrew, and uh, uh, Latin. The three languages, they put, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jew. And the high priests were offended, offended. They said, don't write this. We have no king but Caesar. And Pilate said, I wrote, I wrote, because he claimed to be the king of the Jew. But you see, he was on that cross, agonizing pain, slow pain, but he gave his spirit, and he said, unto thy spirit, unto thy hand, I commit my spirit. So the Lord Jesus Christ had power to lay down his life, and he had power to take it again. And he said, this commandment have I received of my father. And then finally, my friend, we must talk about repentance. Now, in our society today, like for example, chastisement or discipline. Even the British army have taken away the word dis discipline. You know why? Because there's no more discipline. Everybody said, sin is okay, no problem. They invented the free love. While well, God said, love will cost you something. It was love who caused God the Father to send his son. So love is not free. Our society have invented the, such, a, such a love, they call it free love. But there's no free love, my friend. Love will cost you everything. Love will not, love, a happy love, yes, but the foolish, selfish love, you know, foolish love, they call it free love. There's no free love, my friend. You must be wise as serpent and innocent as dog. So my friend, we must talk about repentance. Repentance sounds negative, but repentance means change of direction, change of mind. When you change your mind, my friend, your lifestyle will change. Your dress code will change. The way you bless, the way you talk, the way you forgive, the way you walk, all this will change when your mind change. Because that is the mindset. The battle is in the mind, not in the heart. So there's a battle in our mind between good and evil. But the moment a person accepts Jesus Christ, when they repent of their, of their lifestyle, they repent of their sin, confess their sin, then that mind will become a battlefield. Now you enjoy sin because there's no other force in your life. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He's not preeminent in your life. He's not number one priority in your life. Who is number one priority? Your pleasure. Five minutes pleasure. What's the goal of man? The goal of man, my friend, is prestige, prestige self-realization, security, power, pleasure, and easy time in general. What is the goal of the Christian ethic? What's the goal of my brother and my sister? Our goal, my friend, is to what? To be in character, in character to be more like Jesus. That's why we are here. We are here on behalf of different churches, my friend. We are here to tell you that there is something going on in your life and God doesn't like it. And it is your choice, it's your decision to make a right decision. You can decide here on earth, knowing a day of judgment, whether you go to heaven or you go to hell. And that is repentance, my friend. You can decide, my friend. The Bible said in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, Repent ye is therefore and be converted that your sin may be brought out with the time of repression shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repent ye, repent ye, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be brought out when the time of refresh shall come from the presence of the Lord. And then in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, the Lord Jesus Christ, as in Matthew, he said, Repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Mark chapter 1, verse 15, he said, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You repent ye and believe the gospel. 
Repent, my friend. Change your mind. Change your direction. Give your life to Jesus Christ. The Almighty God said, give me your heart, not your head, not your feet. Give me your heart, and then I will change that heart, because that heart is a stony heart. I must strike it by my precious blood, and I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. And I'm going to walk with you, and you're going to be my people. And I'm going to make you to dwell in the land of your fathers. Give your heart to Jesus Christ, my friend. Repent and ask him to change you. He says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. That was repentance, my friend. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. He said, Come now, let us read together, says the Lord, though your sin be as scarlet, they, they shall be white as snow, they be red like scrimson, they shall be as wool. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Come unto me. Let us read it together. You cannot question God, but you can search Him. He says, Search me and you will find me. Call upon me and I will answer you. In a day of your trouble, in a day of trial and tribulation, call upon me and I will answer you. Then finally, my friend, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. Be not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what are good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the will of God? One of the will of God, my friend, to have a heart of gratitude, to say thank you that I have a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, that I have shoes on my feet. Thank you for the existence of all this wonderful creature I see. Thank you for the sun. Thank you for the moon. Thank you for the stars. Because the stars, the nature tell about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Magi, the wise man came from East. They follow the stars and they, up, they end up in a palace of Herod the Great. You see, my friend, even the wise men believed in Jesus Christ. Even the wise men believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then finally, my friend, acceptance in who? Acceptance in Jesus Christ. Acceptance in the blood of Jesus Christ. No any other crew, no any other prophet can set you free from the penalty, power, and presence of sin. It has to be their soul, Messiah, this Jesus of Nazareth. Because here we go, my friend, seven, eight hundred centuries before the Prophet of Islam, before Krishna and Buddha, before Gandhi, the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, Into ye in a straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that lead to destruction, and many is the people which go to earth. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which lead unto life, and few will find. Narrow, my friend, is a Sirat al mustaqim here the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am your Sirat al mustaqim I am the narrow way. Many are called, but few are chosen. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. And then he said in John chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as received him, who oh, Jesus Christ, but as many as received him, mm. to them gave he power to, to become, become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name.